Uh, we have 187. Not bad, not bad, not bad. And let's see what the time <laughs> in Europe is. Time in Europe, or time in France, because that's like the center of Europe. Uh, let's see. 9 a.m. So we should see a spike in the uh, readings as we go on in the next eight hours, because this is the beginning of their day. <coughs> so first thing they wake up, and they start reading your news. This is uh, the live uh, update on the website. So currently, there's already a person reading it. It's gone very, very busy. I've never seen the website so busy before. So that part is good. And we can see what the behavior of flow is. Let's take a look. Uh, while we wait for that to load, let's see if we can get this to log in. Hey, Vinny, what's up? Hey, sir. Welcome to the amazing Revenue Management Team, where every day we try to stay alive, especially during this funny times. Okay, so uh, Vinny, let's uh, give you an update on what's happened. So. Today, this morning, we got everyone together. Uh, we got a bunch of people together to distribute the article that, that Lilith has written. And uh, the good news is that it's gone out. And it's currently being read by actually quite a lot of people right now. We can take a look at some of the, some of the hits on the website. <clears throat> so all these hits on the website have been, oh, there's two people reading it right now, again. So all these hits on the website, uh, mostly coming from Europe. Thank you very much, Lilith. Um, have been from the the uh, the article getting published. That part is good. And let's oh, Cynthia, welcome in. Hi there. <coughs> All right. So we're going to take a look at the impact of the article so far. Uh, let's take a look at the stats. Actually, let's see if I don't think the stats are updated yet. So we probably won't see the uh, you know we won't see the uh, the effect on cancellations yet. Um, I'll be interested to get Alvin in here and, and see if there's any new cancellations that happened today. Okay, so far 187 opens. Uh, oh, there he is. Speak of the devil. Welcome in, Alvin. <laughs> nice one, Alvin. Okay, Alvin, does that mean you are sick or does it mean you are preventing? You're sick. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. <laughs> Uh, when, I prefer myself if I get uh, quarantine in Murah Rai. Oh shit, okay, all right. <laughs> oh! Stay healthy, Alvin, stay healthy. Okay, does does it feel like, um, does it feel like, like, like a fever or? Uh, I don't think it's a fever, but uh, I kind of get flu and cough pretty bad. Okay, wow, wow, all right, coming, coming close. Um, have, you, have you, uh, how did it checked out yet? Not yet, sorry. All right. We'll just, we'll, we'll just all get the virus. Right. That's the only way to maybe I, maybe I get to check up at airport. <laughs> That's right. You'll be like, I think I have <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. Um, anyhow, let's, let's continue. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Alvin. Uh, we're just talking about the distribution of the article. So far, there's been 187 clicks. Alvin, you've been watching the Jingle Why and Why that. Have you have you seen any uh, new cancellations or a raise in the rate of cancellations so far? There's few cancellations actually. Okay. Uh, after we finish uh, finish the distribution itself, but I there's no let's say like a message from the guest itself that they cancel because they cancel. Let's get they just cancel. Okay, got it. Let's do this. I'd be I'd be interested to investigate. For the ones that canceled, can we go back and ask them why they canceled? Yeah. Sure. Okay. We can do that. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Was it because of uh, <clears throat> the article, or was it just already in their pathway? Okay. <clears throat> let's move on to the next subject. So this is the first uh, project that we've rolled out. Um, we'll call this. Hey, we should we should name this project. Project name. Okay, experiment name. Uh, Lilis, what do you want to call it? It was your experiment. 
I don't know. You said that uh, COVID-19 message blast. <laughs> no, but you gotta, you gotta give it a, a cute name. You gotta give it like, a, maybe something like a flower or an animal. <laughs> we call it like a funny bunny. Okay. <laughs> Something light, yeah. Something like, 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 like something that would make Vinny smile, you know. Something that would uh, produce a, a, a light gravity. Okay, we'll, we'll call it. We'll call it. Uh, okay, COVID. COVID blast. Oh, that doesn't sound good at all. That sounds pretty bad. <laughs> blast everybody with COVID. Um, here, should we call it? Uh, what's your favorite ice cream, uh, Lilis? Ice cream? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Okay. We'll just call this. I'll, I'll, I'll come up with a name for it. I'll come up with it. I'll call it the uh, sea otter. Okay. Sea otter. So it's just it's just a label. Later on when we, when we go like, uh, what was that experiment? We'll just call it. That was the sea otter. Okay, so here's the next thing I want to ask everyone. Let's go around and see, does anybody have any new insights that they've discovered uh, about ways where we can optimize the revenue? Let's go around and see if there's any any new ideas. Lilith, do you have any new ideas? I don't have any other idea yet, sir. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, wait. Jing, I'll write down my idea. Uh, make sure that um, April, all dates have uh, a low season rate, uh, such as forgetting to set April. Okay. All right. Uh, my idea is this. As we were doing the calendars today, what we noticed was that on certain dates, we actually had forgotten to set prices. And these dates are coming up pretty soon, such as in April and May. So um, we went ahead and, and set those prices so that so that that part would be would be done, which is good. Earlier this year, I believe we set all the base rates to be pretty high because we didn't want to accidentally underprice a certain date. So we set any default date to be high. So now we have an opportunity. Uh, we should probably make sure that there is no. Uh, unset dates uh, for the next four months. We can keep a default high rate on Toki, but let's just make sure that all the dates that, that are coming up, we've already set something to. Okay, let's go to Alvin. Alvin, any, any new insights on things that we can do? <clears throat> hmm. uh, that's a bit difficult, actually, to get any insight. Okay, no worries. All right, uh, let's go to Shintia. Shintia, do you have any new ideas? Um, well, I think for new ideas, it is no sir, but can I ask a question? Yes, absolutely, Shintia. What's your question? Okay. Uh, well, actually, <coughs> uh, this morning I saw that you guys do some experiment on squat one top practice, right? And then, yep. Yeah, uh, the things that I want to ask is like, do you have any like um, time? I mean, like, uh, how long you will do that, or just for in this moment? I mean, like, uh, I seen the message uh, before, and then it's kind of like uh, assured in the case that Bali is safe, but how long you will like keep uh, those message, or do you will do the follow up? or just like send it just at the moment. Okay, thank you very much, Cynthia, for asking the question. Um, Cynthia, go ahead and take a look at this line. I've already invited you to this document. So basically, we've already had this set up. There is an experiment. There's a timeline also. There's a rollout plan. And we are currently examining what the cancellation frequencies and the cancellation values are. Um, so part of this experiment is to try to slow down the cancellation rate and also slow down the cancellation values that are happening. The next check-in date should be on March 17th before we decide whether or not to scale this up 
to see if it's effective way of communicating with our guests. Currently we're, oh, yes, okay. We use the second row from March. Uh, could you repeat that, Lilith? Say again? Uh, the second row of this table, sorry. Ah, okay, so this is, this is the actual set. Okay, all right, fantastic. So the experiment should run for a week to let, uh, let us see if it's actually slowing down the cancellation. But I just had an idea, actually, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think we need a week, right? Because effectively, uh, anybody who would react to this message, I think would react in a much shorter time span, probably within a few hours, uh, maybe two or three days at most. So I'm proposing that we do this now. I'm proposing that we change the time frame to look at this experiment from March 18th to be March, let's say March 13th, before the end of the week on Friday. What do you guys think? Okay, yeah, that's my motion. Do I have a second? Okay, Lily, okay, it's been seconded. Is there any more discussion? Okay, let's go ahead and, go, oh, yes, Vidi, Vidi, go ahead. Um, yeah, sir, so considering that we are going to try to stop the experiment earlier on the 13th, uh -huh. um, do we have the rate progression for each weekly revenue? Ah, good question. Okay, uh, Vidi, tell us more about uh, your thoughts on that. Yeah, so um, if you want to observe, uh, like, uh, does the, does well, like, our, our, our action affects the um, slowing down of the cancellation without the data of the weekly revenue itself. That the progression of the sales, basically, in general. Ah, right, right, right. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, we don't get the weekly sales data out until... Um, here, I might have a solution for that video. So, let's see. Uh... We're looking at we're looking at essentially a few things here. We're looking at the weekly is we're looking at a ratio between the weekly sales and the cancellation um, values, right? So essentially, if we can lower that ratio, that the cancellation values become a smaller component of the weekly sales, then this message has done effectively its part. Um, here's the thing I'm wondering too. Here's the thing that I just certainly uh, lighted to. I thought. One of the big questions that we're asking is, will this actually have impact on slowing down the cancellations? And I realize it doesn't take a week's worth of time to realize that. Um, we can just kind of see what the cancellation rate is right now, isolated to squad one. Oh, get some drink first. Okay, thank you, Alvin. And then we can see what happened because what I'm thinking video is gonna happen is this. Either people, let's say, are gonna cancel more because they read the message, and you should see a spike in the cancellations, or they will cancel less and they will proceed. Because um, because the other part that I'm thinking about right now, video is- um, But do we also do this to uh, who just uh, booked? Uh, could you repeat again? Could we also, do we also do this just to booked? I think Vidi said that, uh, do we do this last message to the one that just booked, for example, today? Uh, no, we have not done this to the people who have just booked. Mm. Yeah, because I, I thought that uh, there was a plan to like message uh, those who Oh wait, Vinny, yes. Yes, this would have gone out to anybody who just booked too as well because we looked at whoever had a booking along the calendar for all squad one properties. So anybody who had booked as of, let's say this morning, would have gotten a message too. Alvin, would you agree? Uh, this is my first clip. I think what uh, Fidi made is about the future booking. In just this uh, next booking after today, that we actually also inform them regarding this uh, announcement itself. Mm -hmm. But currently, after that, it's not. <laughs> we don't right. get it. 
you don't repair that platform first right now. Right. All new bookings that happen after today or after this morning have not received a message. Okay. Should we do that too as well then? Or hey, video. Well, like, yeah, because I I want to, uh what I propose why why it has to be within the week uh that we display the revenue in Tableau is that so we can observe the progression. Okay. So here's okay let, let's let's uh let's take a, a branch here should we wait any longer to get let's say the message out to other groups um, yes or no <coughs> open question right now so if, if we're gonna if we're gonna look at, at an analysis uh, uh, having an uh, uh, ah, analyze the effects of this message should we wait for the entire week before we we send any more messages out or is there any other urgent case of messaging that needs to go out to let's say squad two or squad four if there's no urgent cases let's just wait until the end of the week but if there was an urgent case of getting this message out successively then or let's go back to Vidi. Vidi, what do you think we should do um no maybe uh, it's not something that we should do but I, I just maybe there's a misconception of the plan before because i thought that the plan was to also like uh do this for new bookings until a certain point in the experiment mm. maybe that's uh, just a misconception within within the framework of the experiment i think so i think so i think we forgot that part Vidi. yeah um okay given given that now yes over to alvin uh, we don't forget that part. Uh, I actually asked this yesterday also, but basically the consideration is uh, your answer is basically because someone is actually already booking right now, they practically doesn't really affect regarding the coronavirus progress. Mm -hmm. That's your answer yesterday. Right. Oh, right, right, right. We have the context. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Vinny, we're assuming that anybody who is actually booked starting from just a few days ago when the outbreak has gotten more, more global that they are booked with that already in tech in mind. So they're probably not going to cancel at this point because they've already known that there's an outbreak of coronavirus and yet still made a booking. The ones that have not, um, the ones that have booked before that, that, that sort of moment, we don't know what they're going to do now. They book without the context of knowing that there's coronavirus. And so therefore we're thinking like these groups of people probably will still cancel because of, of of what they're hearing unless we 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 message them unless we reach out to them and tell them hey this is what's going on on the ground so in the context of let's say uh there there is a different set i think of, of quality of bookings there are the bookings that book without the um without the concern of coronavirus and then the bookings that happen now I think I already have taken that into account. Um, there's no way that anybody in the world doesn't 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 know about this. So we're thinking these bookings are probably already more stable because somebody's booked well aware that hey, this is this is happening, and they still intend to travel. Okay, um, does that assuage your concerns, Vinny? Um, yeah, but um, that's the thing. If we assume, let's say we assume that those who books. Those who books um, between like yesterday and 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 forward knows like uh, why do we think that in the future people will still cancel not today, basically. We think that people in the future. Oh, okay. So why will people in the future cancel? They will cancel uh, in the future, but not today. We think that the the experiment was done according to this premise that people are canceling because they're not getting enough information about what's happening on the ground here. And they're writing in on queries, asking about what's happening in Bali, is it still safe to travel? And so we're thinking that without us reaching out to present them that information, they will make a cancellation without actually having understood the facts. So this is a way of getting this message out so that the people, there's there's gonna be people who are gonna cancel, I think, no matter what. This is, this is one group of people. There is gonna be a group of people who probably will not cancel no matter what, because they will just, just accept the risk. But there is a group of people, these are the influent, uh, these are the group of people that can be influenced, so to speak. And so these people don't know whether to cancel or not, and they are, they're trying to get information. 
And so we're thinking that, all right, based on that, that grouping, there's the group of people who are going to come regardless, that are probably going to come anyways, no matter what we write to them. The people who are going to cancel regardless are going to cancel sooner or later regardless. But there's a middle group of people that we want to influence. And the idea of sending this out was to influence the middle group of people who didn't know whether to cancel or not and see if we could actually influence that. So if we can influence that, then we can slow down the progression of cancellations that would have happened in that, in that group in the setup. It's kind of like how pol politics works. It's kind of like how campaigning works. There are some people who will definitely vote for candidate A. There are people who definitely will vote for candidate B. What we're looking for is we're looking for the people who haven't really decided A or B yet, and they, they want to get more information. So the problem is we don't know which group of people uh, that is by just guessing. So um, we kind of needed to target the entire group in order to, to just get out there. But we know the influence already. We know it won't stop people who are already wanting to cancel because of their own reasons. And we know it doesn't really stop the people who are going to come no matter what. They've already paid the money. They can't get refunds. And this is going to be it. Um, but it's, it's really that part in the middle that we're trying to influence. Okay. Um, all right. For the nature of the experiment, let's let's extend it out to the 18th to see what happens. But Alvin, let's, I think we have another question on our mind right now, which is your question, which is, does this actually encourage cancellations or discourage cancellations? And on that part, I think we can, we can try to investigate and understand. Um, did the article actually increase the cancellation rate or did it plateau the cancellation rate or did it decrease the cancellation rate? Alvin, just based on what we, you've seen, what's your intuition tell you from just the first few hours? Mm, for me, I think it's pretty much uh, get a balance because some of the uh, guests actually also answer uh, or uh, message basically okay. they said they don't afraid and they don't really care about it. Uh, one thing that's pretty interesting is there's a question that one of the guests actually gonna lay offer on Korea, <laughs> which actually right now, nice, which actually right now have also kind of like a travel ban. Okay, but uh, from what I check also on the news, uh, basically the travel ban is only for the tourists. But for the flag itself, it's still okay. okay. So this kind of like feel on a gray area right now also for, him, uh, for the guests. I, I told her basically to contact the airlines. But we also need to also consider regarding that kind of situation, which actually we have a travel ban for specific area, but actually the guests also gonna lay over on that uh, country. Okay. All right, that's a fantastic uh, segue point. So, all right, uh, this experiment has already run out. Let's wait for the data to come back and see what happens. But in the meantime, Alvin, try to figure out if this actually has caused more cancellations or less cancellations and see if you find any cases where people canceled because we told them about this. I'd be curious to understand that that particular impact. Okay, so this is the first run. Let me, let me actually pull together, uh, since I don't think anybody has any new ideas of what we're gonna do, let's, uh, I've crystallized the existing plans that we have. And uh, I've, I've, I've thought about actually how we can discuss this and roll these other new plans out too. Does that, does that sound good? Yeah? Okay. Uh, sure. Yes. I just remember something. Uh, yeah. This was the idea from what, uh, what we discussed previously with the uh, Aldo Senior one. Yeah. Uh, regarding the discount feature on Airbnb itself. Uh, the one that actually I screenshot from my email. Yeah. Uh, we don't, uh, me and Diba actually have a little bit of difficulties to understand the process of Airbnb uh, promotion. Okay. Because what we read actually, let's say if you actually put a discount, 10% uh, until 25% uh, from our best rates, supposedly we get a strike through uh, feature on our, uh, on our price. Yeah. But some of the case actually, even though we already give a discount like that, uh, the ch uh, there's no strike through, uh, there's, there's no strike through feature that actually happening on, uh, let's say, get uh, what's called kind of active on okay. our best day. But if we actually can um, use that, that's actually also a good point for us. Okay. Because uh, one of the feature actually, if we give a discount around 30% or 40%, it's actually gonna uh, uh, give us a privilege uh, for our listing to get like a uh, email promotion. Email blast, right, 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 right. Okay, all right. And we better get out there soon before uh, everybody else tries it as well, right? We'll win the first round 
of in the blast. Okay. Uh, uh, let me uh, insert the screenshot on that okay. paper. Let's take a look at that. All right. So what I want to well, I want to uh, uh, broadcast out is album uh, Alvin's idea here. So basically, after a certain amount of discount that we offer, Airbnb will do something like that. It's called uh, it's a strike through pricing, and that helps the conversion rate a little. It'll let people who are shopping know that oh hey this property just took, uh, just took a discount. So it kind of gives a uh, oh hey it's like a Matahari discount right? Um, although this is a real discount, not like a Matahari discount. So that that helps a little bit with the conversion rate. And as Alvin said. After a 30% discount, I believe, Airbnb will send an email out to uh, guests notifying them, hey, look, um, there is a discount in the market that you plan to travel to. And that also helps with conversions as well. So it's an extra sort of kick in marketing that Airbnb does if you, if you uh, do selective discounting. Okay, um, this is actually a good pivot now. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you guys um, some of the plans. So, Remember the other day we came up with this prior, uh, these different plans. There was A, B, C, D, E, and F. So what, I, what I'm thinking is that we could have each revenue manager actually champion a certain plan and work on that as we, as we try to fix the revenue situation here. So um, let's see. Let me go to plan A is already in effect. Uh, we're already doing this. Uh, plan B was what I wanted to ask if Vidi can work on it. Vidi, we're looking for essentially what the new market fit is. So I need to have a few more information. I need to know what type of properties are still getting bookings and what are the price range, what are the location, what is that, what is that sweet spot in the marketplace that still sees activities? I'll just give you a simple example of something I found that was pretty interesting. So this was related to uh, this is related to a concern I had about our new Changu base. So at first I was like, oh man, you know, Changu base, what are we going to do out there? But it seems like the Changu crowd is still booking and it's still pretty thick. We're getting between uh, 10 to about 20 bookings a day. Seven is the lowest. So Changu seems a little bit less affected by this than, than other, other particular areas. Let's take a look at, let's say, Uluwatu. Uluwatu, um, a bit less, right? Before we we're talking about 40 some odd bookings a day. Now, still not as bad, but not as thick as you can see Changdu is. So that's what we're looking for right now. We're looking for what type of what type of product is still really selling well, and what is it that we need to do in order to adjust existing product to look more like that. So that part is something I, I would like actually Vidi to work on. So what segments uh, are still selling? And what adaptations would it require, just like the case of Putri Nusa, to get whatever we have to sell better? Um, does that sound like a plan you can work on, Vidi? Okay, Vidi's frozen. So um, <laughs> let me go to the next one. The next one is D. So this is something I want to bring up, and this is related to what Alvin just mentioned earlier um, about travel restrictions and warnings. So I took a look. And uh, I looked at essentially what peak season um, could possibly look like. I talked to Lilith about this and, and Alvin about this this morning. So this is my hypothesis. My hypothesis is that the peak season is actually going to get disrupted due to the rise of coronavirus in our inbound countries like the U.S., Australia, Germany, Indonesia, U.K., France, Netherlands, and Canada. These are the top um, eight countries that we receive visitors from. And here's essentially what we're looking at. Uh, this is an epidemic curve for anybody who um, hasn't seen it before. The blue part represents the epidemic curve in China. So what you're seeing is back in China on, I don't know, early, uh, uh, I think it was early January, about January 20th or so. That was when coronavirus first started appearing. And then it reached kind of a peak sometime uh I don't know, sometime in, I think, uh, early February. And then then there was a super peak moment sometime. Uh, I can't read that, but a little bit later. But now you can see the blue starting to slow down, right? So that's an epidemic curve in China. Essentially, it's the beginning, it reaches a peak, and then it goes down. All right, 
Here's the bad news. The epidemic curve for all these new inbound countries is just beginning now for all the countries that are inbound book and vista guests. So what I'm estimating is that in about three months, these countries will reach peak epidemic at around the same time that we reach our peak season. So then essentially what that would mean is like you have the highest number of, of infected people from that country traveling to Indonesia. And you can probably be sure that Indonesia will not be too favorable to that kind of situation. So given that that is a very likely circumstance, I do not think that there will be essentially a peak season um, left uh, this particular year. So therefore, it doesn't make a lot of sense to actually set peak season prices to be higher than current season prices. Now, so this is something that's already happened in Vietnam. So Vietnam has gotten wise and they've issued essentially not a travel ban, but visa restrictions now. People coming from these countries, South Korea, Spain, Germany, France, Italy, Sweden, UK, Denmark, Finland, and Norway, to Vietnam will need to have health uh, certificates. They'll need to actually prove that they are healthy in order to travel to Vietnam. Now, I would imagine Indonesia, in its wisdom, probably would issue something of the same sometime into the future. So that means that peak travel will severely be reduced at best. Um, it will mean that the, essentially the visas are most likely going to go away. Um, very few people will slip through. And even then, you still got to wonder about how wise this is, right? You're accepting people from a country that will be experiencing the peak of their epidemic. So um, this is what it looks like today. Who knows, maybe tomorrow or the next day they find out coronavirus is a hoax or, you know, it's, it's no more worse than the average flu or whatever else. And this could all go away. Sure, I, I accept that. Maybe that, that's, that's a possibility. But as revenue managers now, uh, we have two things that we control. One, we control pricing um, and we control timing. So in the pricing part, I think we have to think about cancellations are going to happen. So we need to set a pricing that sort of can counteract cancellations. The pricing has to be so good that no matter how, <laughs> how much cancellations happen, somebody else will still think, that's a good price. I still would like to book that. So that way we can kind of counteract the effect of cancellations and also fill the empty space that we come to expect during peak season. Timing. So if we act now or relatively quickly, I think this will take maybe a week to fully uh, distribute, then at least we have the longest runway to fill in the peak season. So that I think is, is the best that we can do in terms of pricing and timing. Okay, counter risk. So the counter risk is what if we accidentally undersell? What if we sell all our peak season days for cheap? Well, I think that is actually in, in, in comparison to a no sale, that's actually better. But I think we can also control that. If we do have a situation, we can monitor where the sales are, are accelerating. Then we can, of course, raise the prices again and, and slow the sales down. But I would like to at least sell 30 to 50% of the peak season dates before it begins rather than starting with nothing in peak season um, as a beginning. Okay, so that is essentially my analysis for the next project that I'd like to roll out, which is effectively a flat pricing across the next four months. So effectively, we do not raise prices now. We essentially keep the price flat for the next four months across the, uh, the most important properties on each squad. So, um, I've done a little bit of research and I've seen that these are the top 12 on squad one, the top 12 on squad two, and I haven't gotten and done squad three and four yet because squad three and four, uh, you know, it's 10% it's, it's of the income. So I'm trying to think about where 90% of it goes right now. Okay. So any discussion about this plan? Okay. Let's see. All right, let's go to this side. Alvin, I've already started this plan. Um, I've spoken with Ibu Lili and Chris Cabanes on lot five and lot six, and they're both favorable to implementing a flat price to the next four months. They both understand and they agree to it. What I suggest is that we petition all the owners down this list to implement essentially flat pricing now 
across the next four months. So we implement the price that we have today, but over the next four months. And it will take some time to actually do this, but I think we can start on it now. Um, okay, so that's my motion. Do I have a second? Okay, all right. Uh, second for question. Okay, second. Okay. All right, Alvin, go ahead. Uh, question uh, regarding the pixel itself. Uh, so it's until the end of August. Uh, no, no, it's for the next four months, right? Let's do it. So okay. So until until, until uh, the end of June from now. So now is about. Uh, the, okay, June then. Yeah, June thirtieth until the end of June. And the rest, I think we just kind of still hope that whatever will happen. Let's, let's implement it this way in phases. Let's go four months for now. If things don't get better, let's say in a week or 10 days from today, mm. we can keep on implementing that pricing all the way out. But oh. just for the moment, um, I'm, I'm suggesting a four month interval. Or I'll open that up to anybody's suggestion if they have a shorter time frame or a longer time frame that they would like to suggest. Uh, okay. Well, that's it. From my, exp from my, own, my one year experience here. Uh, last year is basically May and June is not really a big season also, so I'm okay with that. Okay, all right, so no no worries then. Well, let's go mild. Yeah, let's go four months for the first 10 days, and then we can go, let's say, all the way throughout August. It is, remember, this is our one time of year where we do have, let's say, the majority of our income comes in. So it is kind of a, a, a bet, right? A bet that this is going to work. But what I'm suggesting is a flat season price for now up until June 30th, and we will see the rest uh, as this goes up. If we get no booking still, right? Uh, if that doesn't help anything at all still, then we know that we're sort of um, we're not doing very well. But if we, it, it does raise the amount of booking, then then that's a good sign, and we might be able to still preserve, let's say, July and August. But Let's go in this in phases. I think that this is our first phase, and afterwards we can see um, what the results are after and see if it gets better. Yeah? Okay. Um, great. Any more discussion? So Alvin, Alvin says that essentially this doesn't affect too much, so he's in favor. Let's go to Lilis. Um Actually, I see some property, uh, as you asked this morning, and I found that some property has like uh, already booked i mean uh, they have many rooms uh, that already booked uh, in the future, for example may and june uh, what do you think about that property uh, do we need to do we still need to lower the price i mean good yeah, that, good, good point uh Lilith, point well taken i've noticed like me villas chantique and a few other properties still have actually um pretty good bookings but here's the question also, Lilith. We don't know how many cancellations are going to happen now. So it's the same thing that we normally have when we when we set the pricing dates. We Even on, let's say, last minute, we still would like to overlap dates that are already booked in case those bookings cancel, that there's already a very good price that can kick in uh, and get us the next booking. So I think if we want to play good defense, it's not a bad idea to create those rates because we do – we anticipate cancellations, right? We're not going to like like assume that everything that we see as a booking right now will remain on the books by the time May and June comes along. So this is strictly a defensive posture to say that, hey, look, um, we're going to set this. And um, I don't think, Lilith, it's actually a bad idea to ask. If, let's say, the owners say no, they feel confident, then at least we've told them once. And actually, if things, if things work out, and, and everything gets booked the way it should, no worries. But if things don't work out, then we can always go back and say, hey, look, we told you before, right? Um, now, when we tell you the second time, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe you'll listen. So it doesn't hurt to ask in this particular time for the discount, uh, whether or not they, they give the discount still up to the owner and, and how they view the situation. But I think we can ask. And, uh, and I'd rather, once again, it's about risk, right? The risk of no revenue right now during peak season is, is tangible. It's not it's not super hard because we do already have some bookings if you look at the revenue. But we do expect that things are gonna get get worse. So all that stuff that even
in terms of booking, if you implement a travel ban or just this visa limitation, a lot of that future revenue will start disappearing really quickly. So it's just a defensive position, Lilith, to, to secure. Um, what happens if a cancellation happens? Well, we've already given discounts, so it's likely that somebody else will rebook rather than we have to go back to you and tell you again and, and then implement um, a new new price all over again. Okay? So good good question, good point. All right, is there any more discussion? Is there any more um, about this? Okay, if there's no uh, further discussion, I'd like to just go to a vote. Uh, if you're in favor of this idea of creating essentially a peak season discount, so I'll state the motion in full. So I'm implementing essentially a flat line price for the next four, or until June 30th for all the top 12 properties in each squad. And we are going to take a look at how the implementation of this works over a one week time span to see if this helps or hurts with the future um, revenue accumulation. Yes, Alvin. Uh, first question, uh, just to make sure. Uh, the data that you choose for top property, the highest uh, priority sets, uh, what number did you use? Okay, so the number that I've used for that, Alvin, is I've taken a look at the partner leaderboard and I've oh, okay. it to the lowest, the highest, um, according to each squad. And also, I've taken out ones that, that we don't have, like Linda, right? Of course, we don't have that anymore. Um, I've taken a look, and I've said, okay, uh, what's the highest one in each group, right? And what's the highest one overall? And I've put those together as, as the ones of that. There is another dimension, Alvin, that we can put in, which is what is the ones where the owner is the most favorable to? Um, like, mm -hmm. for example, Chantik will be a bit of a stretch. Which I think is okay. I'm sure those guys will, will totally understand. They don't want, they don't, they hate losing business too as well. But they're also a pretty heavy one, and we we, we, we can put it in. Um, that's that's the way that I've sorted it out. From January, where it was a pretty good month in January, we hit our revenue levels. So most properties did really well in January, and so that is the basis for um, what I put down as the top 12 most important. Um, if you have other ones that you'd like to put in. Uh, I'm welcome. I'm opening the floor for whatever you want to put into uh, on the next set. We can we can we can go out and petition all the owners for all these properties to to lower the price. Mm. Okay. Uh, I just I just want to ask the number because I saw at its residence, but I don't see uh, rumah pertama. Oh, why am right. Why did I not put rumah pertama on there? Uh, uh, yeah, that definitely should have been on. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Good call. Good call. Okay, any discussion? No? Okay, if there's no further discussion, let's move to a vote. Um, if you're in favor of this, please vote in favor now by raising your hand. Okay, one, two. Three and four. Okay. All right. So <laughs> if you're in favor of using this plan, okay, so that's basically everyone, right? Just double checking. Vidi, was there something that you would like to add? Are you in favor of using this plan right now? Um, yes, I'm in favor of using this plan. At okay. least we will have, if, if things uh, like, if there is an increase in a booking pace, let's say, um, the price can adjust. Or you want it to be like flat, uh, regardless of the situation? Uh, oh, right, right. Good question. Um, hmm, right. If the booking pace is already doing really well, should we actually apply a discount? Uh, I think so, Vidi. Because booking pace right now is based on today's situation. Whereas into the future, we're seeing that it's most likely going to worsen. So we're sort of anticipating that that there are going to be factors very soon that will constrict the booking pace, that will sort of constrict the booking pace. And we're doing our best to sort of uh, create counter forces before those constrictions come into place. Does that make sense? So, yeah, booking pace today, even for a property that's doing really well, I think is based on today's situation. Um, in a few months situation, I think it's going to completely change, right? 
So we're trying to like, while we still have some flexibility, we're trying to create braces to give ourselves some space so that when the walls start collapsing, we have, we already have supports. Ah, think of it that way. Essentially the low prices are essentially like supports so that when the walls start collapsing, uh, they can rest on these supports. Currently, no, we don't need them. It looks like okay, but we don't expect it to be uh, okay for very long. Okay, um, cool. So yes, just just implement flat pricing across um, to whoever will will listen um, to to this idea. Okay, uh, let's let's continue. Um, okay, if that's the case, then we can roll out. So let's go for each each team. Alvin, can you double check the squad one list? For us to make sure that these are the 12 most influential and we'll start with those first right we'll start petitioning the owners to ask for this uh, implementation first lilis can i ask you to then take a look at squad two and see if you agree with this list too as well um uh, look I'm, I'm also interested to hear the feedback if we don't if we don't tell our community anything we don't hear anything back from the community either so i'll be interested in hearing like what the owners think what they what their perspectives are on the situation as well and um, yeah. okay and then Shindia on squad four can I have you put together a list of the properties in squad four and uh, squad three I think only has two I think it's just like what was it uh, uh, but okay just put together uh, 12 properties in squad four and then I think when you come in uh, on the 14th you're still coming right or are you okay when you come in on the 14th this could be a really good a topic of discussion yeah. for the community to, to get, yeah. get this implemented in. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, Lilith, you uh, so, have a question. Yeah. Uh, actually, I want to deliver that on squad two. We have like four revenue managers. So I will deliver this idea first. And then uh, I think I will ask Tendi as the most known person in the own site. So I, so uh, I agree. Basically, I agree with this plan, uh, and I will ask the other team. Okay. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. Feedback. Very good. Okay, so I'm budgeting about one week's worth of time to get this rolled out, and I'm hoping we can get 80% participation. Right. So it means that we'll have to go out and have to talk to each owner. Uh, I've already talked to the hardest owners, and they've all said yes. Um, usually, Chris Cabanes never gives a discount very freely. He's like, oh, it's, it sells well. Uh, we've never had to give a discount. Um, and Boo Lily uh, never likes giving a discount. So I, I'm, th I'm thinking this is already a pretty good start. If we get Chantik to say yes, then we know that pretty much everybody will probably say yes uh, down the line. I think it's squad one. Okay, so let's let's start this plan already. Uh, Shintia, I need you to just create the list and start the conversations with the different groups. Okay, Vidi, this uh, next part goes back to you. Okay, so this is plan D right now, uh, and we want to roll that out. Plan C. Uh, yesterday, Vidi, I asked if you could actually scan and analyze the inquiries. Um, okay, uh, do you have like an estimation of, of the, the feasibility of that, uh, of that plan? Is it possible for us to scan all the inquiries and start sorting them into, okay, this, and, and okay, that, that's possible, right? Okay, Vidi. Oh, damn it. Lost him again. Okay, Vidi. Oh, yes, you can use topic modeling. Okay, good. Okay. Talk to Oh, okay. All right. Interesting. That'll be good. Okay, Vinny, I'd like to have point, uh, I'd like to nominate you to be the project champion for these two projects. One is finding the new product market fit, and the second is analyzing the inbound inquiries for topic conversations. So just any insights that you can find from that so that we can take action would be good. And just update us by the next revenue management sync up on Monday to see what we can do with those, yeah? Okay, Lilis, understood. Okay, great. Thank you, Vidi. Lilis. Uh, actually, I haven't has any. Uh, what what is the output of this uh, idea? The B, the ah, plan B. I mean, okay. I haven't understand it yet. Correct. Thank you for asking, Lilis. All right. 
part A is related to something that we might need to do quickly. So this is essentially a market adaptation. So um, let's go to uh, let's go to Vidi. Vidi, you have some experience from Putri Nusa. Can you tell us about what happened at Putri Nusa? Okay. <laughs> okay, then continue, sir. <laughs> I think. Okay. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll summarize what, what Vidi's insight, uh, if, if, I, if I recall correctly. Putri Nusa, when they first launched it, okay, Putri Nusa, when they first launched it, was not doing very well. Essentially, the, the product wasn't conditioned well for the market yet. So, what they found out was that if they took off the breakfast, and they were able to lower the price and take out breakfast, it started selling. So that was a product adaptation that created a market space. Now, what I'm asking Vidi to do on plan B is to discover what is it in our marketplace that still sells well. We know, for example, Changu still sells well. So we should focus on that. We should focus on what is it in Changu that people are buying? And is there anything else in that area that we can, we can converge? Maybe it's the price. Maybe it's the location. Maybe it's a set of amenities. Maybe it's like, let's say, for Russians, right? Um, Russians are still booking. Why are they still booking? What kind of products are they still booking? What can we do to maybe improve the marketing or the offering or whatever is in essentially that particular product to get a, a better fit? That way we can create more connections between whatever's left of the market and the people who are still searching for it. So that's, that's Project B. Project C is right now, if we take a look at our inquiry stack on squad two, there's about 70 to 80% of the inquiries are not getting converted. And we don't know why. Um, we can go in and dig and dig, dig and dig and dig, but the faster way would be if there's a way that we can look inside and understand, okay, these inquiries are not getting converted because the guests are asking for uh, something that the host didn't know about, right? This inquiry is not getting converted because it is asking for a special rate and we're not offering it. So we need to be able to kind of section out each inquiry and understand why these inquiries aren't getting connected. And that goes back up to B again, because if we can figure out what it is that the inquiries are not matching with, then we can kind of tailor the product to be a little bit better. So essentially it's like, it's like mining for gold. We're looking for, little connections there that, that will that will bridge the gap. And then we can ask HAR to focus on, okay, give discounts. When somebody asks for a discount, just take it, right? Or whatever it might be, such that we can increase those inquiries to, to have a higher conversion rate. Okay? Cool. Um, was that a good explanation, Lilith? Okay, awesome. Okay, so uh, cool. And then Alvin and I will, uh, we're still looking. Hey, Lilith and Alvin, um, you guys are working on this cancellation part, right? Uh, Lilith, can I nominate you to watch the cancellation and the, the, the stats on that? Uh, okay, Steve. Okay, all right. So that's just, that's just kind of thinking about a way to communicate with our guests to reduce the cancellation um, given, given the circumstances. I think you can also work on content iterations in the future. Maybe even have a picture of the person who gave the quote, for example, on the next iteration um, to, to, uh, to, to watch that progress. Okay, and then um, Vinny, I was inspired by what you said the other day that we could add new properties. So what I've asked Tendi and Tris to do is to add new properties in Changu. We see that Changu still gets bookings and we have a new base out there. So I've asked them to focus on getting new properties in Changu. So at least we add more stuff where people are still booking and that, that hopefully should help with booking pace and also the sales too as well. All right. Um, on projections, um, we will probably need to give the company a weekly update on projections because I don't know, things are changing, right? So what I'm asking for now is, is there a, a, another metric we can use to, to create a better certainty with projections because the the previous projections were based on month to month and year on year signals but now none of those signals uh are relevant anymore because we're essentially in a new kind of month 
and we're in, in a new kind of year. So um, I'm looking for something maybe a little bit more finite, maybe being able to estimate what our final uh, revenue would be based on daily sales or based on something else. Does anybody have any ideas or, or any directions they'd like to go with that? Okay. All right. This is a lot of work already. Let's 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 maybe uh, under prioritize this part then. So, okay. Um, for the most part, then let's work on uh, plan D for the time being. Let's let's sort everything out according to impact and start positioning and getting that flat pricing. Um, okay. Uh, that pretty much wraps up the time that we have today. Is there any other things that anybody wants to talk about at the moment? Okay, to the list. Uh, actually, no, sir, but I want to involve in the E part. Oh, okay. How, how would you like to be involved? Uh, because uh, I want to learn, I mean, to make projection. And uh, actually, I have met Arjuna yesterday, but uh since uh the condition here is getting worse like uh i want to i want to make the protection that is close to uh, our condition now uh actually uh andy will revise the projection again okay so i would be happy to uh, involve in the project e okay so this is pro uh, you mean project f right uh, yes. Project E is to grow the number of properties. Okay, great. Fantastic, Alice. Um, that would be great. Uh, as, because as I'm sure a lot of our new partners are also probably asking about, are the old projections accurate? And um, probably won't be. Okay, Alvin, any updates on your part? Um, regarding the idea? Yes. Or any, oh. uh, anything, anything uh, in summary. Well, <laughs> uh, first of all, I think the F idea. Uh, I told you, Professor, that uh, on Scott one, uh, when I create a projection, I already create a projection for every property. So every property, right? Wow! Uh, <laughs> Amazing. All right. Every, yeah, every existing property that actually uh, we can control. Okay. Uh, for let's say the one that we can control is like Alchemist, Majoya, you know, and the other thing. Right. But for the one that actually we can control. I already made uh, up lower hints, median, and also upper hints. The current one that actually I use is median, and I want to know actually uh, if it actually uh, the error margin at the end of the month or the March. After that, I can uh, I can try to take a pivot. But right now, if there's actually no difference between my or let's say there's not um, much error margin uh, between my project and also the actual then at least I know uh, there's nothing that I need to change. But I can also double check from each property that actually, which property that actually have a lot of difference. Maybe there's actually the scale of stack actually have a big difference, which means actually our market is start to uh, change on the guesses, but for the villa, it's still safe. Okay. Definitely. Um, uh, involve your projections, because I think all projections are going to be tested. In the, in the yeah. <laughs> all projections are sort of uh, in the float now. All right, Cynthia, any updates on your side or any other questions or anything? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I think I'd like to uh, say my opinion about the idea or A, reduce the cancellation. Okay. Uh, where, uh, I'm not sure about this, but on my opinion, I think the cancellation is still not our control. So maybe, maybe the project will be work, uh, but I think it will be like, kind of temporary stable the cancellation so we don't have any right uh, guarantee that it will uh, stable the cancellation for the long term and also the things that we should do maybe we should anticipate the last minute booking regarding this case yes uh, that's long -term. absolutely Shantia. on this one um, we we can only do what we can do which is we can just communicate what we know um, by and far, cancellation oh. is a guest decision. Yes, uh, Alvin. Actually, if you want to take a little bit more proactive, we can change the cancellation to be moderate for other property. This is actually a pretty funny case that I found. 
okay. one of the guests actually want to cancel uh, and they actually uh what's called they have an excuse that actually this actually uh the concert itself uh ben the travel but actually it's not they just say it's a bad himself uh Fire. yeah uh, they try to miss us airbnb but airbnb found out that actually there's no issue at all and actually in the end they still get, uh get, they still get the penalty for the cancellation if you want to do a more proactive you can do that actually you want to change all the cancellation policies for all the properties to monitor it now if you want to do um, a little bit more proactive this this is kind of like a more aggressive uh, approach basically okay because it's not gonna also affect our booking place in the end yeah uh, true true well let's bring it up okay that's an actually interesting idea um um uh, sorry sorry i think we have to do the change of the cancel what did it right the cancellation for like oh no no no, no. there's still some uh, there's here i'll show you some data every day we still have quite a lot of bookings that come in on uh flexible um, because i think there's some um, experiment in squad four as well and also I know. In squad two out here, right i know but yeah. you see this you see the orange the orange are bookings made every day on a flexible cancellation policy so yes we do have um hey actually let's compare uh there is far greater <laughs> i think that answers your question yeah Alvin? There's like a growing percentage of bookings made with a, well, that depends. It depends on what day it is, right? Some days, okay, it's hard to determine. Not easy to determine. So uh, orange is flexible. Uh, green is moderate. And I, I don't see any big changes in the distribution. It's still about 50-50, right? So it's not like, um, not like too much. But okay. Um, Alvin brings up a good point. That's a pretty big move, but all right, that's something we could consider is changing the policy to all listings to be uh, moderate. But what about what about new listings that are just getting launched? Um, okay, so all right, but all means all, yeah. Uh, okay, maybe excluding new listings, yeah. Uh, once again, it's just an idea, right? But for Squad 1, we always choose a moderate, even for the listing. True. Okay. Uh, that's actually because, once again, uh, this is also about the type of the property, right? Uh, for a guest house, uh, I think it's going to affect a lot if you change it to moderate. True. But this is what this is the idea itself because there's a special case that actually happened when the guests kind of considering to cancel, but it's just because they're afraid for it. But it's not because of the situation of the country or something right. like that. So if it was on a moderate, that would dissuade them a little bit from, from making that cancellation. Um, okay, just, just to check with you, Alvin, real quick. I understand that none of the cancellations that are happening right now are under EC. They're not under extenuating circumstance because there is no outbreak of coronavirus in Bali. And none of the and, – and any – yeah, right? Like, like you wouldn't get extenuating circumstance if you were German and there was coronavirus in Germany or cancellations so okay uh wait i'm done I'm, I'm checking with you Alvin, because i'm not sure uh no uh i don't i, I can't really answer that uh in uh unsure but basically the issue itself is basically if your country actually have a travel ban right uh, to go outside or something like that but if your country doesn't have uh, any travel ban or let's say a visa um team with something like that then there's no issue at all Okay. You can just go. And right. the problem is, if you actually have flexible booking, you book a flexible property, uh, and it's only it's uh, a D minus two or maybe D minus three, you can okay. just cancel it because in the end, it's okay for you. Okay, that's true. All right, that's actually a very interesting point, Alvin, because if we do, let's say, shift it, shift our cancellation policies from flexible to moderate, these are, we have to remember, these are bookings from people who already know that it's coronavirus and still are coming anyways. So part of it might not be necessary, but also it's defense for things getting worse, right? So, but if things do get worse, I wonder if EC will kick in. <laughs> like, like you know, like if they're Germans and there's an outbreak of, of coronavirus in Germany, does EC then say that the German should not be able, should be able to cancel without penalty for, I, I, I don't know, right? Um, hmm, that, that'll be interesting to see. Okay. Uh, let's examine that a little bit more. Let's let's play out the thought experiment. 
of what would happen in that particular case. And if, if there is a measure of, let's say, risk reduction without a, a reasonable risk reduction, RRR, then, then I think we can, we can reconsider on the Monday discussion, yeah? Okay, all right, but, but that's a good brainstorming idea. Um, we've got lots of work to do now, so let's, let's, go, let's go to it then. Um, let's go out and uh, make some stuff happen. All right, thank you everyone for coming in today, and uh, we'll see you guys on Monday for the next, uh, for the next Revenue Management Guild. Uh, I'm hosting my persuasion negotiation practice dealing with difficult people on Friday. So if you want to come by and learn how to negotiate with your boss for extra pay or deal with an upset guest on the phone, um, we'll do some more simulation and some more fun stuff with that. Okay. All right, guys, have a good one and uh, see you guys later. Bye. -bye. Oh, what should you do during the meeting? <laughs>